it's here. Control 2 has finally been officially confirmed, meaning a sequel to quite possibly my favourite game ever made is in development. And with the Twitter announcement of the game, Remedy also released a very interesting piece of concept art. And while the fact that Control 2 is still probably several years in the making means that nothing in this concept art can be taken as the final form of what'll happen in the sequel, there are still a few interesting details I wanted to analyse to get some hints about what we can expect from the story. This is definitely not just an excuse for me to make another Control video, this is all very serious analysis. But without further ado, let's start dissecting this artwork. First things first, location. When I first quickly skimmed over the art while reading the blog post, I simply assumed it was another locale found somewhere in the oldest house, what with a grey colour scheme and reused assets. Looking a little more closely though, it's clear that this is set outside of the oldest house, but not just outside, quite literally on the FBC's doorstep. You can match up the doors you can just about see on either side of the picture with the lobby that Zessie first enters the house through which obviously leads to a whole slew of exciting ideas to flood my mind. The narrative possibilities that being able to leave the oldest house completely could open up are plentiful, and the fact that this investigation is again literally on the doorstep of the house could mean that players will be able to explore both the house and the surrounding New York City. There is, however, seemingly a slight inconsistency found here if this is happening outside the house this control point on the ground. Take a quick listen to a segment of one of Dr. Ass's tapes from the Foundation DLC. The work was half-hearted at first, I admit. But then I discovered numerous non-Aristotelian energy channels converging at its base. Ley lines, dragon roads, Heiligalinian, call them what you want. But this pillar is the crossroads. I started building something. Equal parts talisman and technology. An array that can impose order on the lay junctions. That's the idea at least. We'll see when I'm done. From that description, referring to us creating the first control points to stabilize the house, they work by imposing order on areas where lay junctions intersect, which is a relatively common occurrence in the oldest house, but seemingly very rare outside of it. The fact that a control point is outside of the oldest house, presumably working in much the same way as the ones inside, could potentially just be a case of model reuse to add a sense of familiarity. This is ultimately a concept, but it could also be somehow showing that the power contained in the house has begun to spread outside of its walls and onto the neighbouring streets, meaning control points need to be set up and possibly providing context for the other two main parts of the piece. I've darted around it for long enough, but you don't really need to look very hard to see what the main focus of the artwork is. These three floating bodies in body bags. I've seen some people say these could be his agents from the original game, which isn't too out there an idea considering they were also contorted floating corpses, but I don't think that is what's happening here. If these were the Hiss, don't you think there would be some form of red glow around them? Never mind that, the Hiss can only spread where the Hiss resonance can be found which is handily marked by a perpetual red tint in the area before they're cleansed. These seem like suspiciously blue skies for a world overtaken by the Hiss, so I think it's ultimately unlikely that these are Hiss agents. Rather, I'd expect this to be a side effect of whatever strange event is happening in the building behind them. With an FBC branded top covering it, we can't actually see what has happened to the building, but chances are, it's some form of AWE that has affected these unfortunate bystanders. Looking at images of outside of the house from the original control, it seems that this AWE has occurred in this building, but it's hard to tell what function it actually has. I've seen some say it's an apartment block, but as it's connected to the building next to it, whose lowest floor is clearly not a set of apartments, it's hard to say that conclusively. Coming back to the concept artwork, to the left of our view is a group of yellow cables dangling from above the street that seem to connect to a couple of generators, meaning that there has to be some form of FBC presence inside of the building itself, rather than simply monitoring from the relative safety of the street. I'm about to give two theories as to what the plot of Control 2 could be based on this artwork, but if we assume that the sequel has a heavier emphasis on AWEs occurring outside of the oldest house, 
then the proximity to the home base of the FBC could point to this AWE being some form of tutorial or prologue level for the game, with Jesse needing to assist a group of rangers with whatever dangers might be found inside, before heading back across the road and into the house, and beginning whatever the main story of the game is. Now I'm going to quickly give my two theories on just what plot threads will take center stage in the sequel, based off what we've learned from the original control. I'm sure the plot beats like whatever happens to Dylan, or the after effects of what occurs in Alan Wake 2 will be prominent, but I think that the Dylan threat is going to be more character development for him and Jesse rather than the full plot, while I hope the Alan Wake stuff is kept at least a little separate, as I think one of the biggest strengths the Remedyverse has is that you don't need to know anything about the other games to enjoy most of what each has to offer. You can enjoy Alan Wake without needing to know how Cauldron Lake is a place of power or how it's under investigation by the FBC, and you can enjoy Control while only knowing that Alan Wake is some writer who went missing a decade ago, and I hope that continues for future installments in this world as well. That being said, I think Control 2 will be based off one of two storylines the original set up in collectibles and DLC, paracriminal groups, or the conflict between the board and the former, with the FBC being caught up in the crossfire. Starting with paracriminal organisations, you might be wondering what these actually are, as I don't recall them ever being mentioned in the main storyline of Control. In several documents, you can find references to a growing number of paracriminals and paracriminal organisations, like an autodite and black market in the Czech Republic, or the Blessed and Midwest organisations. If this is the storyline they go for in the sequel, then this concept art can be explained, and some criticisms can be levied with the original game. Some of the collectibles in control show that paracriminals are at least slightly aware of the FBC, and in the intermediate time between the original and the sequel, it's not too much of a leap to assume that at least one of these organisations could have figured out where the FBC are headquartered and attacked the oldest house with their illegal loaded items, the aftermath of that attack being the AWE depicted in this artwork. Having a more varied and less organised group of enemies from several different paracriminal organisations could also resolve a relatively common complaint with Control, with how a majority of the hiss essentially boiled down to a crowd of similar looking soldiers with standard guns. Enemy paracriminals could bind themselves to illegitimate objects of power from a variety of different patrons, and to use weaponry beyond assault rifles and machine guns, massively increasing enemy variety and leading to more exciting combat situations. It would also facilitate having to leave the house and travelling across the USA and beyond, which also means that the occasional complaint about how the oldest house was too repetitive would also be negated. But if Remedy was to go for a different storyline, the foundation ends with a very enticing sequel hook, teasing a conflict between the board, the former, and the FBC. Throughout Control, it's clear that the former has been in some way excommunicated from the board, and forced to survive on its own in some dark corner of the astral plane, and by the end of the foundation DLC, Zessie has no more level trust in the board, with the feeling being clearly pretty mutual. Clearly, it's not that simple. I need to choose a direction for the Bureau. It should be one that serves our goals, not the board's. Whatever those are, I need to lead my way. But with the former having seemingly escaped the astral plane by the end of the Foundation, and the FBC actively looking much further into just what the board is than in previous years, it's not too hard to see how this dangerously tense situation could have escalated into at least some small level of conflict in the probable time skip between the original game and Control 2. I think this could also possibly explain why there's a control point just outside the doors of the oldest house, and the building across the road being affected by an AWE. Maybe the hostilities between the three powers at play here has caused the board to attempt to expand its influence by somehow increasing the effects of the house outside of its borders. If we take Dr. Ass's theory that the Otis House used to be a tree as proof that it's a modern day equivalent of the Will Tree Yggdrasil from Norse mythology, even down to the root occasionally mentioned throughout the game as being literal roots snaking through New York City, then maybe the board has figured out how to spread the paranatural energies inside the Otis House throughout New York through these roots. From a gameplay standpoint, 
If we assume that this concept art being set outside the oldest house means we'll be leaving it throughout the storyline, then having all the signature weirdness being set in NYC through the use of these routes could help to make the map still feel connected, whereas the paracriminal organization storyline would likely force the levels of the game to be very disconnected from one another. The one big thing that's making me doubt this could be what's happening are the floating bodies, as these aren't the flying astral mimics we've occasionally seen before, but rather much more flesh and blood. And I can't think of anything in the original game that shows the board either being able to do this sort of thing or having access to something that would allow them to do this. But again, maybe this is just one of the effects of the AWE behind the top? Who can really say conclusively at this point? That's everything I've been able to pick out from the artwork that I think could lead to clues to what happens in Control 2. It really is too early to say that this is an accurate depiction of an exact event in the final version of the game, especially with it apparently only being in the concept stage of development. On the other hand, while I don't know enough about game development to say conclusively at what point something like this comes in the development timeline, it does appear concept art is produced once at least a first draft version of the story has been produced. So it's not too far-fetched to imagine that a lot of what we see here could be found in some form or another once the game comes out. To be honest, this was really just an excuse for me to talk about the sequel announcement for my favourite game of all time, and I really want to see some of your crackpot theories about what we can expect to see in the sequel based off this art. Leave them down in the comments below, but for now, thank you for watching the video. Ciao.